Hey, welcome once again to The Journey. I'm Carrick, and, and let me just say it too. I love you, and I love the privilege of being a part of this church family. And I'm so excited about today's service. Now, listen, today's service is going to be a little bit different. Today, we're celebrating the 22nd anniversary of The Journey Church. And we're going to celebrate all that God has done in our church over the first 22 years. We're going to celebrate what He's doing now. We're also going to look forward a little bit. And I'm going to share with you some dreams that God has put on our heart about our future. I'm also going to share with you an update on the next initiative. So you made a great decision to be here today. And, and by the way, if you're a first-time guest, this is your first time at The Journey, I don't think you could have picked a better day to check out The Journey because today you're going to get to see behind the curtain and you're going to get to see the heart of our church and how much we love you and how much we love this city. And so if you haven't yet, go ahead and click that button beside the live stream player. Download your message notes. I've got some passages of scripture I, I, I want to show you today. And you can use those to take notes uh, along the way. Now, the Journey Church began as a church 22 years ago. And my wife, Lori, and I, we moved to New York City in the summer of 2001. And about that same time, our founding pastor, Pastor Nelson, and his wife, Kelly, they moved to New York City as well. And shortly after, we teamed up to begin a different kind of church. But just a few months after we got to New York City, the tragedy of 9-11 turned our lives upside down. 3,000 people, over 3,000 people lost their lives on September 11th, 2001. And it turned our city upside down. It turned the entire world upside down. And not only that, but that was a very difficult environment in which to begin a new church. But let me tell you this. As we were there, we learned a very important lesson about God that's still a part of the journey's DNA today. And that is, God is faithful. And God can be trusted. And if we can trust God to begin a church like the journey in the midst of a tragedy like 9-11, we knew we could trust God for whatever challenge came in front of us as we moved forward as a church, including the Great Recession of 2008 when so many New Yorkers left the city, including, in, including COVID and how hard it hit the city in 2020, and not even being able to meet together in person as a church for 18 months during the pandemic. God is certainly faithful. You know, we've been... Uh, uh, we, we officially launched the church in weekly services on Easter of 2002. We just had a handful of people uh, when we did that. But since then, God has used and blessed and grown our church in so many ways. Over 3,500 people have been baptized in the first 22 years of our church. And we've engaged in so many meaningful ministries here in New York City and around the world. And I'm going to talk to you about some of those here today. Well, in, in, in addition to that, in that first year, before we even started our weekly services, we pulled together a vision team, a vision team of, of some of our first members to, to help pray for our church and to help set the direction and the course and the foundation of our church. And now that vision team grew what became the Journey's mission statement. And that's what I want us to begin with today. I'm going to put it up on the screen, but it's there in your notes. I want you to see the Journey's mission statement. And here's what it says. This is the mission of our church. The journey exists to give the people of Metro New York City the best opportunity to become fully developing followers of Jesus. The journey exists to give the people of New York City the best opportunity to become fully developing followers of Jesus. Listen, that's why we exist as a church, helping people become fully developing followers of Jesus. But we didn't just make this up out of thin air. This mission statement is based on on three great statements of Jesus that we find in the New Testament of the Bible. These three foundational passages, these statements of Jesus that we find in the New Testament, our vision team decided that those passages were going to be the foundation of our church. These three statements, they, they just aren't about our past. These, these Bible passages, they're not just about our past, but they're the key to our future. Now, the first of the great statements we based our church on is called the Great Commandments. I'm going to put that up on the screen because Jesus was asked, Teacher, what is the most important commandment? And if Jesus is asked, what is the most important commandment? You better listen. And so here's how Jesus responded. The most important commandment, Jesus says, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. But listen, Jesus didn't stop there. He said, Love me, love God with all your heart. But then he continues. A second is equally important. 
Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So Jesus says, the most important commandment, first of all, love God with everything you've got. And then you've got to love your neighbor. You've got to love the people around you as you love yourself. And if this is the most important commandment, we knew that it had to be the foundation of our church. It had to be, the, it had to be our number one. And we had to be a church that loved, uh, that love saturates everything we do, that we love our city, that we love our people. And so the great commandment was the first foundational passage. Now, the second foundational passage that we base our church on is called the great compassion and we knew this had to be a foundational passage for us because we're a church in New York City. And here's what the great compassion says. And these are the words of Jesus. Uh, it's found in one of Jesus' parables. And here's what it says. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Now here Jesus tells us to remember the least of these, to be a blessing and a light to the less, uh, to the less fortunate. You know, New York City is a city where the richest of the rich live next to the poorest of the poor. And so from the very beginning, we've been involved in serving those in need, including our partnerships with organizations like the Relief Bus and Graffiti Community Ministries, where we help serve the homeless and serve the urban poor, and our special partnership to serve the inmates and staff at Rikers Island Prison, one of the most notorious prisons, most violent prisons in all of the United States. I'm going to say more about those ministries in just a moment. But if you're looking to be involved in community ministry, we're going to be serving the homeless with Graffiti Community Ministries on the Lower East Side this coming Saturday. It will be from 11.45 until 1.30. We're going to be putting together bag lunches. If you want to join us, check that next step on your online connection card today. We'll send you information. But you can be a part of the great compassion as we live that out in our city. Now, one final great statement of Jesus that we built our church on. We say it was the, 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 the great commandment, love God with all your heart, love your neighbor as yourself. And then we said the great compassion to take care of the least of these. But here's the third great statement. It's called the great commission. These are the final words of Jesus. And here's what Jesus said. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I want you to underline that phrase. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Then he said, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. These were Jesus's last words before he ascended into heaven. This is the mission that he gave his disciples and that he's given to you and me. And because they're his last words, you know they carry special significance. You know, they also carry special significance, the Great Commission, because we live in a city of 8 million people. In fact, if you were to put a, a thumbtack on a map of the, the metro New York area, you put a thumbtack in Times Square where we meet for services every Sunday, and then you drew a circle with a 50-mile radius, there are over 22 million people that live within that 50-mile that radius. And most of them do not have a relationship with Jesus. In fact, 83% of them are unaffiliated with any religion whatsoever. And so we knew our church had to be about sharing the love of Jesus Christ with those who didn't know God. And we do this in so many different ways, whether it's through serving evangelism where we're showing God's love in a practical way. We may be serving New Yorkers with a granola bar or a bottle of water along with an invite card, or it may be you learning how to share your faith with your friends or inviting your friends to come to church with you. In fact, if you want to help us show God's love to New York City and reach them with the love of Christ, you can join us for our Union Square Outreach. Again, another next step on your connection card. This is on Wednesday night, October 2nd. In just a couple of weeks, we're going to be serving New Yorkers with granola bars and inviting them to the kickoff of our big new teaching series called Breakthrough. Again, I'll say more about that in, in just a moment. But here's what I want you to know. Because this is so much of our heart, this year we've seen record numbers of people come to know Jesus for the first time. So far this year, 162 people have been baptized. And we got close to 30 people signed up for our next baptism on Sunday, November 3rd. That's our baptism and worship night. And so if you're listening to me and you need to take the step to be baptized, uh, you can let us know on your connection card and join us for baptism and worship night. Listen, the, the reason all of what I've just shared with you is possible 
is because of the incredible men and women that serve at the journey, that make the journey a special place to be. And so I just want to pause right now after sharing with you just a short snapshot of what God has done in our church. I want to say thank you to the incredible people that make the journey so special. You know, uh, those of you who serve on our welcome team every Sunday at the AMC Empire 25 Theater, who make the journey a warm and welcoming place and make people feel loved when they attend the journey. Thank you. I want to thank those of you who serve on our Journey Kids team and on our student ministry team. Those of you who invest in the next generation and try to instill God's word in, in the love of Jesus in the hearts of our children and our youth. Thank you. You're making an eternal difference. I want to say thank you to those of you who serve on the worship arts team and you use your gifts and, and God-given abilities to lead our church in worship and help bring us into the presence of God each and every Sunday. Whether you're on stage or behind the scenes, thank you. You're making a difference. I want to say thank you to those of you who serve every week at our office at Super Service Monday and Super Service Thursday. Nobody ever sees you, but behind the scenes, you are, you're helping us follow up with people who make decisions. You're preparing all of our materials for Sunday. It, what we do as a church wouldn't be possible without you. Thank you. And I want to say thank you to all of our growth group leaders, those of you who are going to be leading groups this fall. Thank you for making yourself available to invest in the spiritual growth of our church. Lives will be impacted because of you. Thank you. Thank you all of you who serve in community ministry and help serve the homeless. Thank you in whatever area. Those of you who pray and are on our prayer teams, thank you for making a difference. Our church wouldn't be the same without you. As you can see, we've got a lot to be thankful for. God has blessed us and is using us to be a blessing in so many ways. Now, I just want to pause right now. I want to just say a short prayer of thank you to God because he's the one who gets the glory because of the ministries of the Journey Church. So let's just pause with me right now and let's pray together. Father, I just want to pause and say thank you. Thank you for the first 22 years of this incredible journey. We're not a perfect church, God. But thank you for choosing to use us and, and to work through us. And um, God, we love you and we are so thankful. And I want to say thank you for all of those members of our church who serve in all those different areas to make a difference. Bless their lives, fill them up. And God, I can't wait for the next 22 years to see what you're going to do. We love you and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before I turn my attention to the future, our founding pastor, Pastor Nelson, he wanted to drop in with a few words. So take a look at this. Well, hello, Journey Church. It's uh, great to have this opportunity to join you and uh, to be a part of this Vision Sunday. How very exciting. Uh, hey, it's Pastor Nelson, if we haven't had a chance to meet. And uh, I, too, am very excited about all of you who serve uh, at the Journey and to see those volunteers on stage. That was uh, quite incredible. So thank you to everyone who uh, gives of their time, their talent, their treasure to make the Journey happen every single week. And, you know, this has been an incredible year at the Journey. You've heard about all the records that we set with baptism and with growth and all of that. But it's also, you know, it's been a challenging year, uh, rebuilding after COVID and getting back together here at the AMC. And uh, there's still a lot of good challenges ahead that uh, I know we're going to face and we're going to be able to exceed. And one of those challenges is more of an internal spiritual challenge. And it's the challenge that's coming up in just a few months in regards to our spiritual growth campaign. But also, by the way, I just want to tell you, a number of you have asked about my health. And I want to thank you for continuing to pray for me. Uh, I'm working very hard on my mobility. And as soon as I can, I hope to be there with you in New York City. Right now, it would be very difficult for me to make that trip. But I am walking more with a cane. And also, I'm seeing some progress when it comes to my immune uh, system. It's, it's building back. It's getting stronger. I still have trouble being around crowds. But uh, I think, you know, in the next few months, uh, we're really going to see some breakthrough on that. Oh, did I say breakthrough? Oh, by the way, that's our book that we're using this fall for our spiritual growth campaign. So I've been praying for a breakthrough. I've seen a breakthrough in a lot of my health challenges from the cancer that you prayed me through to the liver transplant that I'm now recovering from. And so I guess I know a lot about discovering God's power for your problems. That's what this book is all about. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the book, give you some insider info. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that it was the pastors at our church who chose to use this book for the fall campaign. Uh, I think I wrote a pretty good book here. I hope uh, you'll find out, I guess, as you get into it. But I want you to know I did not push this book on our pastors or push this book as our spiritual growth campaign. Instead, because the pastors had served as readers for this book, as I was trying to get it ready to go to print, they said when it came time to pray and seek God's will for what we're going to focus on this fall, they said, we want to use your book, Breakthrough. And so we were able to 
hurry up and get a couple thousand copies of this book to New York City and to Boca, who's also doing the same thing uh, that we're doing here in New York. And we're going to study this book this fall. Now, the book actually is not out yet. It may be out later this fall, may not be out till early January. So we got some advanced copies. And let me tell you something else really cool. Uh, these copies were provided to the journey at no charge to our church. Now, I've never charged the journey for any of my books. You know, if I can donate uh, books like the Generosity Ladder books that we use or uh, the Unshakable books that you've seen, uh, I'm happy to donate those. And those are small enough numbers that, you know, I can just donate them myself and I'm privileged to do it or I use excess inventory here and there. But to get these uh, couple of thousands of copies that we needed, uh, God opened the door for those to be donated uh, to our church. So what I'm saying is this spiritual growth campaign that we're going into this fall, it's already been blessed by God. And I'm expecting that that's just the start of how God is going to bless you, get, uh, bless our groups, bless our Sunday services, and bless the spiritual growth campaign. Now, what do I mean by spiritual growth campaign? Well, if you've been around the journey for a while, you know that it's not uncommon for us uh, for the last three months of the year, October, November, December, for us to set aside that as a spiritual growth emphasis. And it's a time where we really focus all of our efforts uh, around growing spiritually closer to God. And in doing so, we're going to study my book, Breakthrough, and discover God's power for your problems. So whatever problem you might be facing, whether it's big or small or somewhere in between, we're going to see what God has for you and look for his breakthrough for you. So we'll be doing that in our small groups, uh, in our growth groups, and then we'll be talking about principles related to breakthrough on Sunday. Now, we're not teaching the book on Sunday. You'll study the book in your growth group, but we'll teach on related topics on Sunday that complement what you're studying in your group. So we got primarily number one beer on Sunday, then get into a growth group number two, if at all possible. And then we're going to wrap that into some other spiritual growth uh, processes like having daily devotions, uh, memory verses, and the like. And you'll hear more about that uh, over the coming weeks if you have it already. But my challenge to you is make the decision right now to be fully engaged. That sounds familiar, huh? Fully engaged in your spiritual growth this fall. And I'm praying and joining in with you. And uh, we're going to grow together this fall. And I can't wait to see how closer we are to God come December than we are right now because of this fall focus on breakthrough. So get ready for that. It kicks off coming up on October 6th. And I'm sure you hear more about that as the service unfolds today. But also, let me just say, I'm very excited about what God is doing in our church. I mentioned some of those good things uh, earlier, and you've been celebrating those, and you're going to hear about next. And it's really cool to see how people are stepping up and helping us prepare for the next uh, decade or two of what God wants to do to establish our church uh, for a long-term ministry here in New York City. So you're going to hear about that. And my family, we've been giving sacrificially to next. We've been stretching ourselves, and we're going to continue to do that into the fall. So I'll let you get back to your, your service. Thanks for letting me pop in uh, with you, and I'll be right there with you uh, every step of the way as we go through breakthrough uh, this fall. God bless you. I love you. Can't wait to see you in person very soon. So here's my challenge to you. Don't miss the kickoff of our fall spiritual growth campaign coming up in just a couple of weeks on Sunday, October 6th. And the, 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 the fall campaign is called Breakthrough, Discovering God's Power for My Problems. And so invite your friends. Don't come alone. Invite a friend. I hope you can join us in person. We'll kick it off right here at Church Online if you can't. But then going along with that, you've got to join one of our Breakthrough Growth Groups. You're going to get to pick up one of uh, a free copy of Pastor Nelson's book, Breakthrough, if you'll sign up for a growth group today and then show up on October 6th. So click the link beside the live stream player. Go to journeynyc.com forward slash groups. Pick one of the groups. They just meet once a week for 60 minutes between the week of October 7th and mid-December. You're not signing your life away. Give it a shot. You'll meet some great people. You'll grow in your faith. You'll get a free copy of the book that we're going to be reading together. Man, you're, if you'll be here on Sunday during Breakthrough, if you'll get in a group, there's no way you're not going to grow in your faith. So I hope you'll take advantage uh, of that. Well, the great commandments, the great commission, the great compassion... These are the three great statements of Jesus that, that guide our church and have set the foundation for our mission as a church here in New York City. And it's going to guide us into the future. And as part of that mission, the next initiative 
is a God-sized campaign with the goal of helping us fulfill that mission and fulfill, to fulfill these statements, for, not just for this generation, but for generations to come. And so maybe you haven't heard me talk about it before, but what is the next initiative? So the next initiative is the Journey's 20-year, $20 million initiative that we launched uh, not even two years ago at the end of 2022 with the following three goals. Goal number one is to secure the future of the Journey Church. You know, what we're building here, we don't want it just to last the next 22 years. We hope to build something that can bless the next generations with the love of Jesus um, here in New York City. And that means that this generation, our generation, needs to build a solid foundation that will last. It means that we need to make sacrifices now, that we need to begin to think about the legacy that we are going to leave for the future. And so part of the next initiative is to secure the future of the Journey Church. The, the second goal of the next initiative is to double the ministry impact of the Journey Church, to double our ministry impact. Imagine that for a moment. Imagine all the things I shared with you that God has done in our church over our first 22 years. Imagine if he doubled that over the next 20. Imagine if double the number of New Yorkers were able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Imagine we had the n double the number of salvations and baptisms. Imagine we went on double the number of mission trips, double the number of people were served and their needs were met, double the number of lives impacted by Jesus Christ. I get so excited thinking about the possibility. But let me just say this, there is one area of our church that we do not want God to double. And that's the number of meeting locations that we've met in in our first 20 years. And that's the final goal of Next. The third goal of Next is to provide for a permanent meeting location and ministry center for the Journey Church here in the heart of New York City. To provide for a permanent meeting location. Did you know in our first 20 years, we met in over 30 different meeting locations here in New York City. It's amazing. We met in off-Broadway theaters. We met in the basement of a Ukrainian Orthodox church for a season. We've met in public schools. Before COVID, we were meeting in two public schools. We've met in large performance venues. We've met in comedy clubs. We've met in hotel ballrooms. We've met in movie theaters. And right now, we're meeting for services in the largest movie theater in Manhattan, right in the heart of Times Square, the AMC Empire 25. And we love it. But I always tell people, you got to be smart to attend the journey because you never know where we're going to be next week. And I love that that's been part of our story. And if God wants to, to keep us moving around, if he wants to keep us as a portable church, you know, we've grown, we've grown this way. We've had great impact this way, and we will serve him faithfully. But we're also praying that if it's God's will, that he would provide a permanent meeting location for our church in the next 20 years. And that's what the next initiative is about. Our goal is $20 million over the, tw the next 20 years, and the goal is to reach that by 2042. That's a God-sized goal, a God-sized dream. Now, why that much? Why $20 million? Well, it's because we've talked with our real estate team, and if, if you want to own a space in the heart of New York, uh, that's 20,000 square feet that will provide space for a 350-seat auditorium where people can meet. And it provides educational sp space for our children, our youth, and our adults. And it provides ministry and office space for our staff. It's going to be a, over a $20 million investment. And, and we don't want to move into a new space and have a huge mortgage hanging over our, our head. We don't want to do that and then hand the next generation a boatload of debt. That's, that's, sometimes that's not a gift. Sometimes that's a curse. And we want to give the next generation a great gift. And so we want to give them, if it's God's will, a building without debt. And while some of us might not be here in 20 years, we might not be here to enjoy the fruit of our labor, we are the ones that have to prepare this for the next generation and for the legacy of our church. And that's the big long-term goal. But part of the next is a possible short-term goal that might bless our church much sooner. Now, let me explain this. Our goal, our goal by the end of the year for the next initiative is to have $1 million uh, for, for next. Now, to date, we've gotten off to a great start. Uh, close to $670,000 has already been given to the next initiative. And so that, that's a strong start. With the, with the next initiative, though, our tendency is to think, uh, we've just begun. I mean, we, we've still got over 18 years in order to reach that goal. So there's, there's not a sense of urgency. But let me tell you, it's very important that we start strong. Because if we get off to a good start with next, and if we're able to designate as much money as possible to our opportunity fund in the future, we're going to be able to move more aggressively on any opportunity that God might put in front of us. Let me explain. As many of you know, 
while apartment rents in New York City right now are at an all-time record high. Because of a slower economy, because of remote work, because of business being slow to come back to New York City, office space and other commercial real estate, right now it's sitting empty all around the city and it, it is more affordable than it ever has been, more affordable than it's been in decades. And there is, and you know this, you walk around and you see it, there's empty office space, there's empty real, real estate space sitting all around the city. And if God were to provide an opportunity, not to purchase, but for a long-term lease in one of those places where we could, where we could set up and meet weekly for services and, and it provided enough seating and it provided enough office space for our staff and educational space for our children and, and our youth. It was a space that we could be in, not just on Sundays, but 24-7. That could be a really great uh, short-term goal as we prepare for that long-term goal of buying a place. And so if we're able to get 1 million in the next initiative this year, if we're able to get to 2 million by next year, and if God were able to provide an opportunity, we would be positioned in a place where we could move if, if something like that came up, maybe even by the end of next year. And so we've been working with our, a real estate team here in the city to see what's out there. And last year they actually found a, a promising spot not too far from where we meet in Times Square right now that, that might have worked. It was, it was in our budget and it had space for over 300 seats. And, and the, the building's owner, their architects even drew out what it might look like for our church to meet there. They were willing to give us a 10-year lease on that uh, space and it had kids space and, and, and all of that. And they were willing to put uh, tens of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars into a possible build out. And so they were excited about it. But before we ever put any money into it, there were several hurdles that couldn't be overcome, not on our side, but on their side, like getting a permit for public assembly. That's a big deal in New York. And so the building wasn't set up to be able to get a permit like that. And so uh, it, that, that didn't work out. But there's opportunities like that that will be available in the city in the coming years with the open space that's there. And that's, that's why getting to $1 million this year, getting to $2 million by next year is so important. It's going to put us in a position so we can move aggressively whenever those opportunities come open to us. Now, the good news is, besides our regular tithes and offerings, our church has already given close to $670,000 um, to the next initiative. But let me tell you, to get to our goals, to make this possible... It's not something that only a few people are going to do. It's going to take all of us being a part of us, all of us giving. And so today, as we celebrate our past, as we dream about the future, I want to take a moment to show you how you can support the future of our church. Because that's what we all want. We want to support the future of, of our church here in New York City. So in your notes, take a look at this. To support the future of our church, here's the first step. Pray for the future of my church. Write, write that in. Pray for the future of of my church. Now, 2024 is the year of prayer at the journey. Everything in our church, it begins and it ends with prayer. And so will you join me? We join our staff and our members and our leaders in praying for the future of our church. You know, I think about all that God has done at the journey in, in our first 22 years, and it's incredible. But I really believe this with all my heart, that our best days are still ahead of us. And so let's commit to pray for one another. Let's commit to pray for our future. Let's pray for those uh, to, people who, who will come to faith in Jesus and those who will be baptized. Let's pray that God would work in and through our church in amazing ways in the coming years. Let's pray together also for the next initiative that we give generously and, and that through it we're ready to respond to whatever God puts in front of us. And so pray for the next initiative with us. And let's pray boldly for that space that God might have for us in the coming years. And, and a space to own, whether it's in 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. And maybe even a space that we could lease before then. Let's pray for it. And let's see what God does. And let's pray the way that Paul encourages the church that, in Ephesus to pray in Ephesians 6.18. Look at what it says. It says, pray in the Spirit at all times. And on every occasion, stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. And so the first step, if you want to support the future of our church, is to pray for the future of our church. Here's the second step. If you want to support our church, to pledge to give to the next initiative. Pledge to give to the next initiative. Now, 
We currently have pledges from close to 60 people for uh, just over $1 million over the first five years of the next initiative. But here's the thing, 58 people pledging close to a million dollars, that's incredible. But we have a lot more people in our church than just 58 people. And so maybe as you've been hearing about the vision of our church, God is touching your heart to make a pledge and to begin giving something towards next so that we can reach our goal. And this is something beyond your normal tithes and offerings that God might lead you to do. Or maybe, maybe God is, is leading you to make a one-time gift. And if so, that's fine. But on your connection card today, if God is leading you to say, you know what, I want to give this much over the next five years. Would you do that and say, you know what, I want to give this much. Maybe you want to give this much this year, or maybe God puts on your heart over the next five years. But if he has, would you just on your connection card say, I want to pledge this much to the next campaign over a certain amount of time. Again, and if you want to make a single gift, you can, do, you can definitely do that as well. And as you pray, pray and ask God, God, what, what do you want my specific part in the next initiative to be? Because what we're talking about today is going to take a commitment from all of us, everyone listening to me today, everyone in our church. We all have a part to play. And so ask God, God, what would you have me give? And let me remind you that this initiative is not about equal giving. It's about equal sacrifice. And God knows that what's a sacrifice for some is not a sacrifice for others. So give in a way that stretches your faith. And that's what our memory verse for today reminds us of. This is our key verse for the next initiative. And so let's read it out loud together. Wherever you're joining us for Church Online, read this with me. Hebrews 11.6. Are you ready? Go. It is impossible to please God without faith. I love that. It's impossible to please God without faith. So make a pledge, make an initial gift, automate a, a gift above and beyond your normal tithes and offerings to go to the next initiative. And by the way, when we launched the next initiative less than two years ago, we told you that a portion of next would be designated to ministries and missions that are traditionally a part of our annual special offering. Uh, ministries like uh, uh, international missions, inner city ministry here in New York City, our benevolence ministry. And that's going to continue this year. And so let me, let me give you a quick update on that. And, and first of all, from your giving to next, we've been able, and I mentioned this earlier, we've been able to support and be involved with ministries like the Relief Bus and Graffiti Community Ministries. And those are uh, graffiti's where we've been able to donate school supplies. We've been involved in their food and clothing ministries to serve the homeless and the urban poor and to make a difference in the lives of immigrants who've come to New York City and don't have a place to go. In, a, in, in addition to that, We've also been able to fund our benevolence ministry. We've helped families in our church who needed one-time emergency financial help in order to pay bills or to uh, uh, pay rent or to, to buy groceries. And plus, Next has helped fund our ongoing ministry to the inmates and staff at Rikers Island. And this Christmas, once again, partially through the Next Initiative, we want to bless every inmate at Rikers Island with a meaningful Christmas gift so they know they're not forgotten. And, and, and we want them to know that Jesus loves them. And I'm even hoping we're able to make some in-person visits to Rikers Island this fall. But your commitment to the next initiative, it doesn't just fund ministry here in New York City. It makes a difference all around the globe, including helping us support uh, Hope Christian Schools in South Africa. This ministry started as, as a way to provide child care for children whose parents were in a HIV AIDS clinic. And, and since then, it has grown from child care to be a full-fledged Christian school from pre-K all the way through the 12th grade with over 300 impoverished children that are a part of it. And we, we sent a mission team this summer uh, to serve there, and we've got mission team, missions coming up. In fact, if you want to be a part of our next mission trip to South Africa, just check that next step on your connection card, and we'll send you more information on that. And then one other area uh, internationally, this is our other ongoing international partnership, it's with Moscow Evangelical Christian Seminary in Russia. We started this partnership just two months before the war in Ukraine broke out. Now this, this seminary was begun by a former KGB agent whose goal is to train pastors to start churches in all of the former nations that made up the Soviet Union, including the Ukraine, including in Russia. And this year, we've been able to pay the tuition for four pastors who are being trained there to take the gospel. Now, that's just amazing to me. And so if you want to support the future of our church, pray for the future of our church, pledge to give to the next initiative. 
And then finally, here's the final way you can support the future of our church. And this is important and it's very personal. Pursue my spiritual growth this fall. There's nothing more important that you can do than to pursue your spiritual growth this fall. You know, the truth is you grow according to the commitments that you make. And it be, by the way, if, if you make a commitment that you're going to read your Bible and pray every day, you're going to grow in your faith. And if you commit to join one of our breakthrough growth groups and, and, and meet those new people and, and, and study God's Word, you're going to grow in your faith this fall. And, and if you attend and bring a friend with you to the kickoff of our breakthrough uh, teaching series that begins on, on Sunday, October 6th, you'll both grow. And if you'll trust God and step out on faith and do what He asks you to do in supporting the mission of our church, I can tell you this with confidence, that He is going to grow your faith. And so I want to encourage you to remain committed to your spiritual growth this fall. Now, as I can tell you, as someone who has followed Jesus for 40 years, the greatest seasons of spiritual growth come when you step out on faith and you join God in His mission and you stretch yourself to be a part of something that's bigger than just yourself. And that's what, that's what I pray that we're doing here at The Journey. So don't stay on the sidelines watching. Get involved, serve, give, pray, grow. Let God use you and let God do things in your life that maybe you never even thought were possible. If you will, if you'll do that, he will. I feel about you the same way the Apostle Paul felt about the church in Philippi. It's our last verse. And this is, this is my heart to our church. Here's what Paul wrote. Philippians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my request for all of you with joy, for you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. And I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Listen, your faith is an inspiration to me. You know, we've had quite the journey together over the first 22 years of the Journey Church. But I believe the best days are still ahead. Why do I believe that? Well, because God, who began this good work within us, will continue His work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus comes back. Let's pray together. If you would, bow your heads with me right now, and let's go to God in prayer. I want to pray for you right now. Father, thank you for making our church a place where you are changing lives, where people are coming to faith in Jesus and are being baptized. What a privilege it is to be part of the eternity-changing work that you're doing here. God, show us the work and the part you would have us to play in what you're doing here. Show us how you would have us to serve and pray and give. Give us the faith to trust you. And listen, as we pray, if you've never taken the very first step of faith to believe in Jesus and accept the free gift of salvation that he offers you, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. If you're ready to step across the line and get right with God, just pray the simple prayer in your heart silently as I pray it out loud. It's simply this. Father, today I come to you knowing that I'm missing out on the most important part of my life, a relationship with you, the one who created me, the one who loves me. And so today for the first time, I put my faith in Jesus. Jesus, I believe you died for my sins, that you rose from the dead. Come into my life, forgive me of my sins, and secure my eternity in heaven. I commit to follow you from this day forward as a part of your church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.